Hi guys, I'm uh, Fiza Bas back with another episode of my interview series. As you can see today, I have with me Emmy Hoskins. Hi, Emmy. Hello. How are you? I'm good. So uh, I have Emmy today, and I'm very, very happy to you know talk to her because she's one of my really favorite writers and one of the most generous person I have met online. So uh, let's uh, talk, welcome uh, Emmy. Thank you so much. uh i want to talk to you guys about uh, you know the journey of amy so that you know you can know her better and then we can you know proceed after that uh, and ask her about her journey in the interview as well okay. amy hoskins is a writer based in nashville she completed her degree in arts from agnes scott college georgia hoskins paints ex- expressively figuratively and representationally she has several series of painting at this time several of them are currently active apart from writing and painting she is also into music and photography <laughs> so amy first of all uh, i want to say that once again that you know i love your work and it's a privilege for me that you are here today with me and i am you know talking to you so thank you so much for joining me well, i'm a huge fan of your work as well i was happy to write a blurb for your new chat book it's just brilliant brilliant thank thank you so much uh, oh, okay welcome. amy okay <laughs> so and everybody can see amy is you know one of the most generous people so yeah you can see that she you know she's brilliant so uh, <laughs> amy tell me uh, how did you develop an interest towards art in the first place okay well i first started when i was finger painting when i was 5 years old and then i destroyed everything and then when i was writing in the 4th grade i did the same thing i i destroyed everything so it wasn't until for writing i started writing again as in a senior in high school and all through college and since then and then with painting i started in 1993 because i had jaw issues tmj and it was affecting my whole face it was hard to make expressions it was hard to talk everything hurt so i eventually got surgeries for that but before then my my colleagues at work gave me materials they gave me huge pieces of paper and lovely artwork supplies like watercolors and brushes and pencils and things and because i had been using this tiny sketchbook with a tiny palette in it and would make tiny paintings and they were like look you got to expand <laughs> So that's really when I started painting in watercolor and then in 1990 no 2004 I started in acrylics and I pretty much do acrylics now and this is one of mine here called Live Oak and this is another one I'm working on right here <laughs> I do industrial photography and this is after one of my industrial photographs so it's got rust on the bottom and lots of dots and noise and things and pink and stuff so <laughs> but i'm very slow painting now it takes me about 3 months to complete one whereas i used to do two a month so but i write poetry about two a month so far <laughs> uh amy i think your voice broke up in the and at towards the end of your answer so uh, i'm getting the question again so that you can okay. answer it okay sounds good <laughs> yeah uh so sorry Aww. so these glitches happen uh okay so amy tell me how did you uh, develop your interest towards art okay well um when i was working in washington dc in the 90s my jaw was really messed up it would lock open or lock closed and it caused all kinds of pain when i made facial expressions or tried to talk or move my head so that was very serious and my friends at work i was working with the quakers at that time the french committee on national legislation and they were so kind and they gave me art supplies they gave me huge pieces of paper like 20 by 30 inches and I put them up on the wall and started painting because I didn't have an, an easel yet. Um, but I had been using this tiny little sketchbook that a friend had given me and a tiny palette that was like that big with a very tiny brush, and I was painting clouds and 
all kinds of color theory kind of things. And I didn't have any background. And my friends gave me the materials and that just kind of set me off, got me started. <laughs> okay, so I can see the paintings behind your back. So are these the ones that you have recently painted on? Can you please this show one, us? Yes, this one is called Live Oak. It's after a photograph of mine from Cumberland Island off of the southeast coast of Georgia, where the live oaks are huge, but they're twisted by all the, the wonderful storms that come through and just twist them up, but they're still there. And then this one is based on an industrial photograph of mine. And it's basically a photograph of a, a plate of metal that's been painted and it's rusting and so it's, it's got all kinds of stuff going on in there. <laughs> very, very wonderful paintings. So uh, <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, okay, so Amy, tell me something. So you are such a fine painter and, you know, you are also into photography. So how, you know, you came into poetry. I mean, how did that happen? I started writing poetry in fourth grade. And I don't remember exactly why I did it, but I destroyed all the things that I'd written. And then I took a creative writing course in a senior in, in high school. And my first poem for that, that I submitted got published. So I was like, wow, this could happen. <laughs> so I'd, I started writing and writing, writing. I had some poems published in college at the college level. Um, and then I just kept writing. I did have a, bro a block in 2000 and I started collecting words. I was traveling all over the state for three years about um, early childhood health. And I would just write down proper names and poetry lines and anything I saw on the back of a truck or whatever. It was just like, so I have two collections of words, words one and words two, <laughs> but they're huge and they're just a wonderful found poetry kind of thing. And that got me started in writing again, so. I, pr I pretty much write two poems a month now. That's a good progress, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, okay, so I was going through your website and I came to know about your inspiration. So uh, tell me something. So what particularly inspired you about the tropical natural world and worldwide uh, environmental threats? And how do you incorporate them into your art, whether it's your painting or it's your writing? Mm -hmm. um, for the painting, I did a series of tropical landscapes and I got this magazine called Islands, I had a subscription to that. And it just beautiful writing and beautiful photographs. And a lot of these areas are threatened by global warming because the temperature of the water and the water rising. So they're threatened, but they're also like, we're so bombarded by concrete here that the landscape and, and big telephone poles, it breaks up the landscape that you don't have the connection to nature anymore. So that was another reason why I did the tropical landscapes. And in my writing, I'm political just through and through. <laughs> and I'm a nature lover. So the climate crisis is just horrifying. So I try to put peaceful things into my poetry as well and try to envision the healthy world rather than focusing on the illness and kind of visualize what the earth would look like if she was all healed. Wow, that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, tell me something. So you are also into expressive poetry, like, you know, uh, have you uh, tried that? I'm sorry, expressive? Uh, sorry, I'm saying, are you also into expressive poetry? Oh, I did one. I did oh, okay. on okay. assignment. It was a, um, a gentleman who had photographs of Czechoslovakia and there were three people on a bench and like four or five people walking by and one guy looking off into the distance and another guy looking on his phone like so intently like uh, and then everybody else just had these different things. So I think it was called eight travelers or something like that. So I have done one. <laughs> I really hope that, you know, I get to read more of your, you know, work, expressing oh. poems. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, tell me something. So you are into uh, multiple art forms. So, but there is any art form that you find more liberating than the others? 
Mm. They're each so different. Photography is very instant because it's digital. Even before it was digital, it was instant because you could just say, oh, I've done it. I captured it, you know, and I would edit with the camera rather than editing after the fact. So there was this just big thrill of all that in the moment. Now, po uh, poetry is such an expression of my soul, my heart, my emotions, my thoughts. Um, it's kind of like my lifeblood. Whereas painting is so calming. It's so smooth. And I, I try to keep everything really smooth. So you can't see where my brush stroke was. And it's just, it's such a smooth process that I really, it's very calming. Whereas poetry kind of stirs me up. <laughs> Okay, so are there any upcoming projects that you are currently working on as we had discussed uh, before the interview, so you were working on something. So would you like to share that? Yes, two things. We live in a home that was built in 1884, so 20 years after the Civil War. And the house next to us was on a map of 1864. So during the war, that building next to us was there. It's the only thing on the proper, on the block. Since then, we've had many historic properties come through the neighborhood, and we're trying to see with the Historic Commission if we can get this area labeled as protected historic area, and we'll know something like late, late this week and see if we'll bring the community together to do that. And then the second project is related because our neighborhood is very diverse, and the interstate came through the neighborhood and just cut it in half our neighborhood in South Nashville, and then the neighborhood in North Nashville, Jefferson Street, this huge area that was a wonderful area for music and clubs and art, food, all these things. The interstate came through there and cut it in half and the businesses went, went out. It was just disrupted the whole place. So there are three elders, one named Chaos, which you guys may know, um, who's a Vietnam veteran and a wonderful poet. He goes to schools and churches and teaches about history and perspective and identity. Um, secondly, there's a gentleman who wrote a book about Jefferson Street, a walking tour of Jefferson Street. And thirdly, there's a gentleman who owns a music store museum or a music museum for Jefferson Street. The three of them, we're going to interview them see if we can get them walking down the street and pointing to things that that used to be there and that used to be there. And we're about 12 to 18 months away, but we've got a videographer and a producer director and we're applying for some grants and just hoping that we can get the word out about what used to be there. So the two projects are kind of the same because they're about history and preserving, you know, things before they get torn down for big unaffordable buildings <laughs> for tourists. Uh, anything else that you would like to share? Any other uh, thing that you are working on your open mic series or anything? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a Nashville poetry pop-up on October 10th at 1. It's a secret location. You, you uh, email poetry pop-up Nashville and they'll send you the location. And it's really fun. And secondly, we have October 23rd is the next Gestalt Poetry Open Mic. It's at 1 p.m. Central. And Gary Huskison is our feature poet. And also we're going to have costumes because it's close to, uh, to Halloween. <laughs> okay, uh, now I want to request you and this is the favorite segment of uh, my personal favorite. And that is that I want to ask you to read your poem. So yeah, let's hear you. Thank you so much. I started pulling together some of the poems that had been published recently. So I think I've got about four or five published poems to start off with. The first one is called Bargain with Wildness. And I wrote it in February this year when we had a big snowstorm for a week. This one is published in October, Middle Tennessee State University, Right Shift Magazine. <laughs> okay, Bargain with Wildness. A brotherhood of winter birds acclimate above the snow at the feeder we can barely keep full. 
gentle mother's white blanket has touched us all with a new silence, comfort inside, terror and chills without, the wild survives somehow. A new gunshot across the street at Shoot Park, just one shot this time. I run to the window, see nothing except snow, two men leaving each other, one still, one running, no bodies, no blood to show. A return to innocence, appearances for now. Inside out, I'm irritable after days being snowbound four inches more on the way tonight. The silence is thick. Light is blinding from the sun. Two nights ago at dusk and light fluffy snow falling, giggles and laughter from kids enjoying their first snow in the deep dark. Videos, selfies, multiple gunshots a block away. The laughter stops, resumes with a peculiar humor at the absurdity of life and death on a hair trigger, and then they are gone. More snow on the way. The thick blue comforter spares us all night. Space heater, door closed to steward the heat. The rest of the house left to the struggling HVAC already in auxiliary mode. We have power, heat, food, friends in our bubble, fireplace with fire and breakfast casserole to share. We disregard the bullet holes only to find joy and closeness, proximity to the frailty. Life is precious, absurd, glorious and fleeting, depending where you are, who you are. For now, the snow gives the semblance of equal grace. It melts with rain next week. A brotherhood of birds at the feeder. We keep our bargain with wildness. I, I really have no words. It's a very, very uh, significant poem, and I believe everybody should read this. Uh, if, where is it available? Is it available online? It will be next month. An MTSU right shift. And I can post the link when it happens. Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. It's a very, very important read. Uh, any, any other poem that you would like to read? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> This is the one you were referring to earlier that was published by Senyu, which is a 10-year poetry celebration for Poetry in the Brew. The theme was body. The question of the egg. He took the egg, rubbed it between his hands until the shell was gone. Then I was exposed. Maybe I grew around what was left until the shape of the egg was lost in folds of my heart tissue. Or maybe it drifted in my bloodstream like a lost craft, a broken plane. Did it evaporate, evaporate in the confusion of the heat of that summer, disintegrate and become part of the invisible everything where dead leaves and grandparents go? Unlike you who can put the tapes on a race, I am haunted by the ghost of a small unborn bird, wildly shadowing me, pecking, chirping, telling me maybe it could have flown. Wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I love those lines where you are saying that, you know, where, where parents go, where grandparents go. Uh, those, those lines really speak to me. I mean, it's like, it's a very, very beautiful line. And I want to congratulate you on, you know, Thank writing you. this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have many, many poem, more poems I can read. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. It depends on time. It de okay, depends yeah. on your time. You know, I'm completely fine. Uh, I just uh, have to ask my husband because he's currently managing the recording. So just like... Uh, uh, just give me a second. Just, just give me a second. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I'm going to read an original sin poem that I wrote last week. <laughs> okay, original sin. One, we go to the bar for a drink. He plays guitar well, sings, accompanies your pop-up poetry performance. Later with drinks until they've cut him off, he asks, are you a sinner? I'm a Buddhist, I say. I don't think that way. There is darkness and light. Don't you believe in original sin, he asks. No, we say. Have you ever lusted? Do you ever lie? We were being put on the spot. 
we don't believe we're evil after all. We leave the bar just in time before his final judgment. Two, by now, no one is innocent of such histories, no country, no race, no tribe, except children born without blame. We all hold responsibility. It isn't sin we carry in our hearts, but history and our very DNA. We can all be classified as sinners or people trying to overcome. There is no judging, roaming eyeball following our every move. If we bear witness to the whole of time, not judgment of sin, but compassion, do we drop sin like an old robe to the floor? We are responsible to make the world better instead. Three, the Buddha statue is made with loving hands. Their light and intent follow me from room to room. Offerings, robin's egg, shell, fresh roses, flowers, a glass rainbow string of beads, candle and flame light my vision for the day. The moon escapes me. Ancient magic yo-yo pulls us back and forth. Wordcraft, no spells, but magical thinking. Imagining the awe-inspiring natural world healing, abundant and well. Don't feed the illness. Make your wishes bright and light-filled. She says, walk lightly on the earth. Feel the pulses of all life connected to you. Feel your own pulse here. We are one with all things natural, not overlords, but stewards after all. We own this concept of original sin. Let judgment go. Let kindness rule your heart and soul. We change the world by breathing. Open wide. Let all the medicine sink in. <laughs> wow, that, that's really awesome. Uh, Amy, is there anything that you would like to say uh, to our audience at the end of the session? Any message that you would like to give to the emerging writers or you know, uh, mm -hmm. even the established ones? Any, anything you would like mm -hmm. to say? Sure, just keep writing, keep listening to yourself, do a lot of self-reflection because that's where we heal. Love yourself, keep writing. <laughs> and um, my website is www.amyhoskins.com. And if you go to the writing section, you can see everything that I've published and events and things like that. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, now I'm going to turn off the recording so then we can have a chit chat for a while, uh, post interview, and then we will uh, wind up the session. Okay. So, Sounds good. Thank you.